Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play King's Quest 6. Last time we made it inside the castle, but it still feels like there's some preparations we could have made before we came in here. But oh well, we're here now, so we'll just uh, take what comes. So everyone's getting ready for the wedding, so hopefully nobody will notice us. Uh oh. By Cerebus Collar, I'll be glad when this wedding is over. Bay, I'm getting mighty tired of this patrol. It's wearied me to the bones. I couldn't agree with you more, Wolf. <laughs> Who'd have thought we'd ever have to listen to Princess Cosima crying all day long and be ordered to ignore it yet? Something sticks in my craw about the whole thing. The Wazir says that the Princess is not herself. Says she's half mad with grief over her parents' death. I can see it, the poor might, but still. I agree, it seems cruel to lock her up when she's so heartbroken. Let her out in the fresh air, I say. It'll do her a world of good. I well, she insisted on the morning period, and it's up today. Thank the stars. It's too bad we couldn't find that nightingale of hers. The wazir says she's been pining for it. <laughs> If I had an ounce of luck, I'd have found it weeks ago. <sighs> Not only would it cheer up the princess, but the reward the wizirs offered for it would make me pretty happy too, doggone it. Aw, oh, well, our luck will definitely be out if the wazir catches a snap in our jaws at our post. Sorry, Wolf. I'll keep my muzzle shut. Interesting. All right. So of course they mentioned the morning period, and I love how that's a part of the game because it would be weird if she was just locked up and nobody thought twice about it. But the fact that uh, they sort of made a, its storyline relevant with some sort of archaic morning period and with her crying all the time, it it makes sense. Sort of. Even though it kind of doesn't, everyone acknowledges that it kind of doesn't. So I like that. Anyway, so that they're looking for the Nightingale. The Wazir says that it's lost, but I bet he's just trying to get them to capture it and give it to him so that she has no uh, way to communicate with the outside world. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's uh, wait for them to come back and let's see if we can't tempt them with a fake Nightingale. Remembering the guard dog's interest in Cosima's Nightingale, Alexander has a thought. Hey, who the... Um... Hello there. Don't just stand there, grab him, Bay! Whoops, I think I had to wait for them to turn around. Uh, I'll bet it's that saboteur fellow the Wazir warned us about. I say we run him through right here and now. No, woof. The Wazir will run you through if he doesn't get a chance at the prisoner. Let's put him in the dungeon for safekeeping, then we'll go tell the captain. Hey, Wolf, you're right. Let's go. Okay, I didn't want this to happen. You'll stay in here until we find out what the Wazir wants to do with you. The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind them. The sound of running footsteps echoes outside Alexander's cell. What are you doing down here, Shrew? We've already got him locked up. Go back to your post upstairs. Uh, uh, the Wazir wanted to know what all the commotion was about, and I told him about the intruder. He told me to post extra guards on this one. Extra guards, huh? So be it. Just as Alexander realizes that he has no possible means of escape, he hears the sound of wedding music playing somewhere in the castle. Confound this dungeon! I'll never be able to stop the wedding now. Uh oh, it's a noble thing to have a means of escape, and tis a far, far better thing to never get caught at all. Alright. Okay, so let's get the Nightingale out, but wait for them to turn around again. Remembering the guard dog's interest in... Alexander winds the mechanical Nightingale, and places it strategically on the floor of the upstairs hallway. All right, let's uh, go over the here. Oh, yeah, the Alexander mechanical bird because behind it's the pillar. I just want to hurry and get this done so we didn't get caught again. Look at this wolf, a metal bird. 
Sure is, Bay. How do you suppose a metal bird got in here? You got me, but there's something weird about it. Hey, could this be Cosima's nightingale, do you think? What, you lapdog? The princess's nightingale isn't some tin thing. How do you know? Have you seen it? Well, no, but... I don't know, Bay. Humans can be pretty strange. Hmm. With their sense of smell, maybe she wouldn't even know it wasn't real. I say we take it downstairs to Captain Saladin. He'll know what to do with it. What about our post? Jowls and Mitre in the other hallway. They can handle it for five minutes. Think about how happy the princess would be to get her nightingale back. And then there's that reward money and my missus. Right, Wolf. Let's go. Ah, uh, well, it's obvious that they care for the princess. Alexander hears the guard dog's boots clank noisily on the staircase leading down to the Grand Hall. All right. Now, what was this right here? Alexander checks behind the portrait. And there's nothing there but a nail. What's... Alexander takes a closer look at the portrait on the wall. Oh, it looks like that's the king and queen. Interesting. Kindly smiles light up the faces of the couple in the painting. The man has an intelligent, sensitive look about him, and the woman is quite lovely. Alexander guesses that the man and woman in the painting are none other than King Caliphim and Queen Ilaria, Cosima's parents. Hmm. Well, anyway, let's grab the nail. The curved marble wall yields nothing of interest to Alexander's fingers. Alexander pulls the nail out of the wall and keeps it. Yeah, you know that saying that uh, adventure game characters will take pick up anything that's not nailed down? Well, with Alexander, that's not even true anymore. He'll even take the nails that, that nail things down. Alright, so let's uh, go over here. Alexander finds the hallway door unlocked and slips inside. Alright. Hmm, whose room is this? Alexander is standing in a masculine bedroom. Polished marble walls rise to meet a tall ceiling, and the furnishings have an opulent feeling. He wonders whose bedroom this is. Well, maybe we can find out. The trunk is locked. Oh. Well, luckily we got that nail. Alexander wiggles the nail in the trunk's lock until he hears a click. Alexander opens the trunk. It looks like the owner of this trunk is quite the correspondent. The stack of letters appears to be ordered by date because the top one is dated only a month ago. What's... A small glass bottle filled with oily-looking perfume is in one corner of the trunk. A few worn leather books occupy the trunk. The top one is entitled Guidebook to the Land of the Green Isle. Hey, that's... A book like that might have been a big help when Alexander first arrived. <laughs> the trunk's owner obviously found it interesting, too, for the guidebook is dog-eared and stained. What's funny is the game's manual is actually that guidebook. Alexander picks up the most recent letter and examines it. The letter is addressed to Abdul Alhazred from the wizard Shadrach. It reads, Greetings to a brother of the Black Cloak. I was sorry to hear of Great Mordak's death, though he was a bit of a ninny at chess. It seems the plans for that little kingdom of yours are coming along. I must congratulate you on your handling of the king and queen. Isolating the island so that no protest could develop was another brilliant stroke. It looks like there's not much left to stand in your way. Do as I recommended with the girl, and you shall have your crown. That fiend! Interesting. So yeah, that kind of lays out his plan for what's going on. And uh, yeah, the reason that Cosima was with Mordak in the last game was because of the Wazir. The Wazir was just planning to take over the line of the Green Isles once the King and Queen were dead, but the Princess came back. So he had to change his plans and then uh, make a plan to marry her. Interesting. There's a box of ebony on the table. Alexander opens the ebony box and looks inside. Hmm. 
Inside the ebony box is a piece of paper with the word Zebu printed on it. What's that about, Zebu? Some old ivory dice have been left in the box. There's an old bottle of black ink among the box's trinkets. And it looks like that's just a pen, so nothing special. Alright, hopefully the guards aren't back yet. Let's see what's further Alexander up. Alexander hears the muffled sound of crying coming from the back hallway. Hmm. Alexander can barely make out part of a doorway in the north hallway. Wait, was it this one or that one? The door is locked from the inside. There must be somebody in there. A heavy wooden door leads off the hall. There's a keyhole in the door. Alexander decides to sneak a peek at what's hidden behind that door. Naughty. Alexander can see little of interest from the keyhole's vantage point. Okay, maybe uh, I want to be going this way. Oh, whoops, the crying is, gets louder, I think. On the north sense. wall of the hallway is a thick wooden door. The doorknob and keyhole are literally buried under a heavy padlock. Yikes. It looks like someone wants to make sure the occupant of this room does not leave. The door is locked with a heavy padlock. The door is locked. Wait, is there anything we can do? On the north wall of the hallway is a thick wooden door. The doorknob and keyhole oh, wait, looks I like... Okay, I have to do this. Hello? Is there someone in there? Who... who's there? Kasima, is that you? It's Alexander! Alexander, is it really you? When Sing Sing brought me your ring, I could scarcely believe it. How did you get inside the castle? Never mind that now, Princess. It isn't important. What can I do to help you? Do you want me to get you out of there? There's a padlock on the door, but I think... No, please. Don't even think about that. There are guards everywhere, and the Wazir would have you killed if he found you. You shouldn't even risk being outside my door. Please go now, Alexander. But what about you? I can't just leave you locked up like this. The only way out for me is to stop the Wazir. See what you can do out there. In the meantime, I should be safe enough. He hasn't harmed me. Yet. Besides, if I can get my hands on something with which to defend myself, I'm pretty sure I'll get a chance to use it. The Wazir feels safe around me. No one else can get that close. You're so brave, Princess. But it's too dangerous. Have you forgotten where we met? What is Abdul compared to Mordak? I'll be fine. Now go! Alexander hesitates. I'll do as you say. I will find some way to help you, Kasima. I swear it. I believe you, Alexander. Please, be careful. Alright, well she's saying she wanted to manage to defend herself. She actually said that in her letter, too. We have a dagger here. Kasima, take this small dagger. It's not much, but perhaps it will prove useful to you. Oh, thank you, Alexander. I'm sure it will help. And I would also like to show her that letter that we found. Alexander is carrying a letter taken from the wazir's trunk. That's what I thought, okay. I found this letter in the wazir's bedroom. I... I think you should know what it says. <gasps> I can't believe it! Oh, I had my suspicions, but this confirms everything. Alexander, you must take the letter. You might have a chance to show it to someone who can help you stop the Wazir. Alright. Now let's uh, go back. The guards will be coming back any minute, so what you want to do... Alexander, here's the guards approaching from the stairs. Okay, I'm going to save real quick. Alright, so what you want to do, so there's no suspicion... Alexander puts the nail back into the wall. Quickly put the painting back, because otherwise they'll check Alexander on it. Alexander puts the heavy portrait back on the wall. And then they'll find you. A 
if you didn't have the brain of a cat wolf, you'd have known that mechanical nightingale wasn't Kasima's nightingale. I was all for staying on patrol, but you wanted to show that thing to Saladin. Well, at least the captain wasn't too mad. He's a good honest dog, Saladin is. I err. Wish the same could be said for our... Hush! Do you want to be dazzled, you fool? Somewhere nearby, a door opens. <clears throat> Greeting, Shamir, sir. A petulant voice snaps a response at the guards. The wedding is about to begin. Make sure everything is secure. Yes, sir. Footsteps retreat down the hall towards the back hallway. Alexander hears the distant sounds of chains rattling. A door opens. There's a small commotion and a woman's sharp cry. Kasima! Gradually, the sounds fade away off to the east. All is silent. If it weren't for him being the wizard's page and all, I'd have something to say about that. Grr. Grr. Wonder where he's taking her. The wedding's the other way. You never know with that one. He's always showing up when he shouldn't be and going where he oughtn't. Let's go check it out. Okay, so yeah, they're gonna go check on the princess because they're not liking how she's being treated, and they're very suspicious as it is. The dogs seem to have stopped at the back hallway. All right, so we should be pretty safe. Let's go back down. From downstairs, Alexander hears the first wafting strains of music. Hmm, it's beautiful music. It's wedding music! Alexander looks cautiously around the Grand Hall, but there are no guard dogs to be seen. The wedding music is coming from behind those two large doors. Oh no! Prince Alexander, here. The Wizier will have my head for allowing you within a mile of the royal wedding. Since you are of noble birth, I will give you five seconds to explain your presence here before killing you. I warn you, it had better be good. Uh oh. Um, well that is... Captain Saladin, consider. I know you cannot be blind to the Wizier's true nature. My personal feelings have nothing to do with it. I serve the crown. Uh, let's just... You give me no excuse to save your life, Prince Alexander. You were told to stay away from the castle, but you chose not to listen. I have no choice but to obey the Wazir. But Saladin... Oh. Tickets up next. Evidently, Saladin is a dog to be reckoned with. No kidding. Okay, so... Captain Sa Let's do that. What you really want to do is show him the same letter. Wait! If you love your princess, you'll hear me out. The Wazir is not what he appears to be. Kasima is in terrible danger. I have proof that this is so. For your princess's sake, you must believe me. Let me see that. Saladin reads the letter, his sword points still against Alexander's throat. Alexander watches the guard dog's noble face darken with rage. This is treason. I'll have his throat. But how do I know this letter is not a forgery? You could have written this yourself. But I did not. Have you no doubts of your own about our Hazred? Don't you see? All he wants is the crown. Kasima is being coerced. We must stop the wedding. It is true. I have had my suspicions about the Wazir, especially when King Caliphim and Queen Alaria died. But I have seen Kasima with him several times. She appears to be quite happy, even enthusiastic. I don't believe she could love him if he truly were so wicked. I cannot believe for a moment that she loves that snake. A jilted lover would not believe it. 
But come, see for yourself. If you say so. The captain of the guard leads Alexander into the throne room, where a ceremony seems to be in progress. Alexander feels his blood run cold at the sight. I, Kasima, declare Abdul al Hazred as my lawful and beloved husband and king of this realm. But, Kasima, what are you saying? Do you still claim that the princess is being forced? Perhaps it's you that's the danger, as the Wazir has said. This can't be happening. Kasima, stop! Prince Alexander here? This is an outrage! How dare you allow this traitor to get past you, Saladin? You stupid mutt! Can't you even keep the castle free of assassins during your own princess's wedding? Kill him! Kill him now! <sighs> Lord al -Hazred, with all due respect, you are not quite king yet. And this is a wedding ceremony, not an execution. What? How dare you contradict me, you flea-bitten mongrel! I gave a direct order. Obey me, or feel my wrath. Milady, I apologize for my behavior, but I am yours to command in all things. I wanted merely to hear your own wishes from your own lips. Tell me what it is that you wish me to do with this young man, and I will obey. Why, Captain, you heard my dear Abdul. If he wishes this atrocious young man's death, then I want nothing more than to see him get his wish. Obey thy liege now and always. As you wish, princess. Wait a second. We take the mirror. Look that. into this mirror, my love, and show us your true heart. That mirror? No! <laughs> the lovely image of Kasima suddenly bursts into smoke and is replaced by the Wazir's genie. Shamir, you fool! It's not my fault, Master! The illusion was broken! Treason! What have you done with the princess? Enraged, Saladin and the other guard dogs begin advancing on the Wazir. You worthless genie! Do something! Oh, we need to uh, chase after him. Let's go! Oh, you're not escape me. Where do you even think you're going, dude? If you're going up, then there's no... You're gonna hit a dead end eventually. Alexander, be careful! Al Hazard has a sword! Oh, no. Shut up, wench! Shamir Shamazel! Get in here! Here I am, master! It's about time, you bumbling fool! How could you let him follow me? Well, there were the guard dogs, master, and then... Never mind! Just kill him! Kill him now! <sighs> As you wish, master. This ain't good. Razzle, dazzle, snap and snazzle! Uh, what is he doing? al Hazred's genie, Shamir Shamazel, looks like he's winding up for a huge dazzle spell. And he's aiming it at Alexander. If he could have done that the whole time, then why didn't he do it before? Send a ball of light to Frazzle! The Dazzle Ball hits Alexander. Oh, Alexander! No! Tickets up. Next. Genie, meanie, miny, mo. Alexander. Okay, so here's what you're supposed to do, and this might be another place where you can get absolutely stuck if you didn't pick up a certain thing, meaning the mint leaf. Gene likes mint, but it also makes him drunk. Look what I have here, my friend. Peppermint. Nice, fresh peppermint. 
Razzle, uh, dazzle. Mm. Forget the stupid peppermint. Don't you dare even think about it. Always gonna do more than think about it. Mm, mint. Oh no, not now. <laughs> Do something! Shamir Shamazel! Kill him! Send a small... I mean a ball of... <coughs> light to frazzle! Dazzle Ball goes wild. Ooh, uh oh Oh... 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 <laughs> you killed my genie! You idiot! Don't you know how valuable he was, you fool? I'll kill you myself for that outrage. So shall it be, El Hazred. I'm ready. Uh oh, what do we do? There's not any weapon within reach, is there? Any weapon at all? Alexander, no! Dickens up. Next. Touche. Alexander should have been on guard. So of course it's obvious. Let's grab this sword here. Inspiration. Alexander fixes upon the only weapon in sight. This should be easy. Oh. Zounds. This sword must weigh a ton. <laughs> Good. Then you shall only fail sooner, my prince. So it looks like he's got a two-handed sword going on, and he's, uh... So, the mouse would bite? This mouse shall bite, as you shall soon see. Or should I say, soon feel? He doesn't seem trained in it, but he... I love this ha! part. You can barely lift that sword, my prince. Better to lay it down now. I promise to dispatch you with little pain. A tempting offer. But I think I'll wait and see what this sword can do. Suit yourself. Yes, I love this part because it's a heavy two-handed sword and Alexander is still holding his own, showing how much skill he has and how dedicated he is. Some nice a rotoscope action going on. Oh, but this is uh, going on too long. Oh, Cassim's freed herself. Alexander's arms start to tremble under the effort of wielding the huge sword. His muscles are nearing exhaustion. Ha! And so it ends! Not if I can help it, you murderer! And this is why you want to give her Kasuma the dagger. thrusts the small dagger into al shoulder with all her might. Ah! You! You dare raise a finger to me? You will regret that, princess! Now that he's distracted. There's no reason to use that object. Kasima, are you all right? I'm fine, Alexander. I was just so afraid for you. There's no need to fear anymore, Princess. Yes, I know. How can I ever repay you for myself, for my kingdom? It was not in me to let harm come to you. Can you find it in you, Princess, to give me more than your gratitude? Alexander! What are you saying? I love you, Kasima. Would you ever consider... Do you think you could... marry me? Could you ever have doubted it, my prince? Uh, ahem. <laughs> Guards! 
Princess Kasima, are you well? I'm quite well, thank you. Please take Abdul and put him in the dungeon. See to it that he gets a doctor. Yes, Majesty. Kasima and Alexander ask Captain Saladin to perform their wedding ceremony. Saladin is honored to do so. On this historical day of great joy in the land of the Green Isles, we witness the union of Kasima, beloved princess of this realm, and Alexander, prince of Daventry. Do you, Prince Alexander of Daventry, take Princess Kasima to be your wife, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. And do you, Princess Kasima of the Land of the Green Isles, take Prince Alexander to be your husband, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. Do you have a ring? I have Alexander's royal insignia ring. Very good. Please place the ring on Kasima's finger. Who gives this bride to be wed? That would be me! In the name of King Caliphim, beloved friend, I give his daughter Kasima in wedlock. Thank you, Jalo. Since the groom has no family present, I will speak on his behalf. Alexander, your union with this woman is sanctioned and recognized in the eyes of the community. Thank you, Saladin. Then, Alexander and Kasima, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Hooray! Excuse my interrupting your joy, but I have an important question for the new bride and groom. What is it, Saladin? Alexander, Alhazred hurt this little kingdom nearly to the point of destroying all that we stand for. But you are true and good, and have proven yourself to all the people. Thank you, Captain. King Caliphim and Queen Alaria are gone, and can never be restored. Al-Hazred has, thankfully, been banished. But we are leaderless. I believe you too can heal this small kingdom from all the damage that Al-Hazred has inflicted upon it. Will you too, Alexander and Kasima, consider becoming the ruling king and queen? Why, I'm honored. What do you think, Kasima? I love my homeland, Alexander. I would be happy to stay and serve it all my days. I wish my father were here so that I could ask his advice. I will miss him, and my mother and sister, and Daventry. But I love you, Kasima, and I do feel at home here. Somehow, this land and I seem to suit each other. I don't know what kind of king I'll make, but I accept. Oh, Alexander, I'm so happy. If only my parents could have been alive to see this day, my joy would be complete. I'm sorry I could not spare you that grief, beloved. King Alexander, there is a long road ahead. The ferry must be repaired before we can reunite the islands. Unfortunately, the islands are still feuding. It will take some time and great diplomacy to convince them to reunite and stop fighting each other. Yes, Alexander. We will have to try to discover how Alhazred managed to make them hate each other so that we can undo what he has done. Now let us celebrate our good fortune. The evil that has plagued this land is done, and a new reign begins. Long live King Alexander and Queen Kasima. Long live King Alexander! 
Long live Queen Cosima! Long live the land of the Green Isles! Hooray! 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 Well, all's well that ends well, I guess. But not so fast. This wasn't quite a satisfactory ending. Like uh, the guard dog was saying, there, the islands are still feuding with each other. There's still that issue going on. There's still the issue that, you know, we killed that genie, but in the end, that genie really was innocent and just needed a good master. Couldn't we have implemented that plan to swap the lamps? And what's with those magic spells we got? We got the book, but we never got to use them. And there's also the issue with the druids. We never really get got to deal with them. Hmm. Remember that the uh, oracle was talking about some sort of other path we could take. One that was perhaps more difficult and darker. But one that would lead to a better result. So what could we have done different? Well, you're just going to have to find out next time on Let's Play F uh, King's Quest 6. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.